So it's really a pleasure to be here this morning and to have the opportunity to discuss our work on STATMIN2, a new therapeutic target for neurodegenerative diseases, including amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and frontotemporal dementia. So ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, is a <coughs> very severe condition that is due to the death of motor neurons that do innervate muscles and lead to muscle con con uh, contractions. Uh, it is um, usually leading to a fatal paralysis within a few years after disease onset. And most patients have uh, no family history, but around 10% of the patients have some familial um, history of the disease, and several genes have been associated with ALS. There are so far four FDA-approved drugs that provide functional improvement or a survival benefit of a few months. In the past decades, it's been recognized that ALS actually overlaps with another neurodegenerative condition called frontotemporal dementia, or FTD. FTD is characterized by language and behavioral dysfunction and is the second most, co most common cause of dementia after Alzheimer's disease. While clinically very different, some patients can have both ALS and FTD. And we now know that several genes are mutated and can lead either to ALS or to frontotemporal dementia. Another commonality between these two conditions is actually the aggregation of a protein called TDP43. TDP43 is an RNA binding protein that is normally localized to the nucleus, but in affected neurons, it does aggregate within the cytoplasm with a striking nuclear loss of the protein. The discovery of TDP43 was really a breakthrough for the field because it's disrupted in the vast majority of ALS patients, whether sporadic or familial cases, as well as a large proportion of patients with FTD. We now know that it's actually not specific for ALS and FTD, but is seen in other neurodegenerative conditions, including up to 50% of patients with Alzheimer's disease. So recognizing the crucial role of TDP43 in neurodegeneration, we and others have used emerging genomic approaches to determine what are the normal function of TDP43 and what are the consequences of the nuclear loss of TDP43 in disease. In 2019, we described that the genes most affected by TDP43 loss is called STATMIN2. Indeed, we showed that TDP43 normally binds the statmin to RNA, leading to the normal processing and full length production of the protein. However, when TDP43 is disrupted, there is an abnormal splicing event that leads to a truncated transcript and a profound loss of the statmin 2 protein. Importantly, this is happening in disease. Indeed, we now know that statmin 2 is disrupted in the vast majority of patients with sporadic and familial ALS and FTD, as well as in Alzheimer's patients who have TDP43 mislocalization. So these results provided evidence that statmin 2 is a novel therapeutic target in neurodegenerative disease. In addition, recent studies have really shown that statmin 2 is a crucial protein for neuronal function. Indeed, in vivo loss of statmin 2 lead to the denervation of the muscles, which is a, a fundamental feature of ALS, strongly supporting the relevance of statmin 2 in disease. We also know that statmin 2 is required for neuronal axons to regenerate after injury. Here are uh, iPSC-derived motor neurons that we grow in microfluidic chambers, and then we pr uh, perform a mechanical axotomy and let the axons recover for 24 hours. Normally, these axons recover, but in iPS motor neurons, where TDP43 or statmin 2 are depleted, there is not a regeneration of the axons. So recognizing the important importance of restoring statmin 2 in TDP43 neurons, we, um, perf we initiated a collaboration with a team at Ionis Pharmaceuticals to develop antisense oligonucleotides that are able to block the abnormal splicing of statmin 2 in TDP43 deficient cells. We identified such ASOs that are really potent at restoring the level of statmin 2, both in vitro and in vivo using new 
mouse model that we have generated. We also showed that these <coughs> ASOs are able to restore the ability of neurons to grow axons after injury. So we are very excited by this ASO approach, and actually there is a similar approach that is now being tested in patients in a clinical trial led by uh, Keralis. However, we also recognize that there is a fantastic opportunity to uh, develop alternative approaches to restore statin to in neurodegenerative diseases. And so for this, we took a comprehensive strategy where we have generated several cellular models to monitor the endogenous level of statin 2 and we have performed small molecule screens as well as genetic screens to identify modulators of statin 2 We are now in a position to validate these hits in cellular models as well as animal models that we have generated. And so today I'm happy to uh, discuss a new program that we have launched that stemmed from very striking results from the small molecule screen. As you can see here, six out of the 10 first hit from our small molecule screen were statins. And we uh, confirmed that indeed there is a dose dependent increase of statin 2 upon treatment with statin in um, cells that have TDP43 mutation. We were interestingly, uh, uh, interested to see that actually there are several epidemiological studies that reported the beneficial effect of statins in neurodegeneration. However, the mechanism of action of statins in uh, neuroprotection is not established yet. We know that the uh, effect that we see on statin 2 is not an off-target effect of the statins. Indeed, we can target different steps of the mevalonate pathway. I told you that statins were identified from our small molecule screen, but this screen also identified TOFA, which is an inhibitor that acts upstream of the pathway. We have also used small molecules that act downstream of the pathway, and these were also able to increase statin 2. And our genetic screens have uh, determined that we can actually downregulate several crucial enzymes of this pathway with a similar effect on statin 2. We also observed that statins actually have uh, an impact on neurite elongation and were able to increase the neurite elongation in cells. This is consistent with a study <coughs> from uh, the group of Chris Anderson when he was at Columbia where they had uh, performed a small molecule screen for uh, neurite outcross and statins were the top hits. They had actually demonstrated that um, statins could uh, improve axonal regeneration after optical nerve crush in vivo. So we are uh, really excited by this finding and we just started uh, an Amplify program that is um, supported by MGB Innovation in order to develop uh, a new uh, statin analogs. Indeed, statins are cholesterol lowering drugs that have not been developed so far for uh, uh, indication in the central nervous system, and we propose to develop new molecules and to test their in vitro and in vivo pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamics in order to have uh, improved compounds. And we will uh, look forward uh, in the future for partnering in order to move this approach uh, to clinical development. So what I've presented is highly collaborative, and I'm uh, really grateful for wonderful collaborators, including in Don Cleveland's group and Catlett's groups, as well as the team of Frank Bennett, Ionis Pharmaceutical for the development for, of antisense oligonucleotides, as well as the team at MGB Amplify, in particular Robert Hubert, who is a chemist developing these new molecules, and Matthew Nolan, who is a, a wonderful postdoc in my group, uh, who is leading this project. Thank you so much for your attention.